Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mike Brignone. I'm a technical service chemist at Ivana Corporation in Horsham, Pennsylvania. I work in the Crosslinkers business line. I've been with the company for four years and today I'm going to give you a presentation on silyl polyurethane crosslinkers for ambient cured top coats with fast return to service times. About four years ago, uh, Ivanic developed these silylated urethane hybrids for the automotive refinish market. And the goal with these product, products was to develop a system that had very, very high scratch resistance and overall strong durability, which are the two most desired properties in the automotive refinish market. In addition to the very good scratch resistance, these systems also have some other advantages over traditional polyurethanes. One, they're easy to clean. That has to do with the degree of cross-linking in the polymer system when it's in a thin film. These products cure incredibly quickly. They're much faster reacting than a traditional polyurethane, um, and they also react at room temperature. Some of these products, in fact, can be touch dry within one hour. And most importantly, these systems Unlike polyurethanes, they're free of isocyanates. There is no isocyanate monomer or polymer in the system. So the applicator is not exposed to the hazards that are typically associated with isocyanates and polyurethane systems. So, so what exactly are these are products? are based on the molecule uh, what, you see what, what at what the center these, of What are the these crosslinkers that we've Vestinat developed? Vestinat EPIPMS is the trade name. And IPMS stands for 3-isocyanato-propyl trimethoxysilane. This molecule has some really, really interesting properties when used as a building block for uh, polyurethane silane hybrid crosslinkers. As you can see, the system has actually two different functional groups on either side. So it has an organic structure on the right. Um, you have your traditional NCO group. That product, that part of the molecule, can react with hydroxyl functional materials to form a urethane structure. The other side is a trimethoxysilane functionality. The trimethoxysilane functionality is hydrolyzable with moisture, and from there it can react with anything that is a hydroxyl functional material, or it can actually react with itself. And when the system hydrolyzes and crosslinks either a polyol or with itself, you end up with a a uh, heavily cross-linked um, polymer network that gives a sort of SiO2 type like structure that gives the really high hardness and excellent scratch resistance that these products are known for. So we combined inorganic and organic properties together with these systems by using IPMS as a building block. We can form hard segments but we can also form flexible polyurethane segments. So this product is basically used for non-isocyanate polyurethane systems. So how do we take IPMS and actually react it to make a, a crosslinker? So these hybrid urethane crosslinkers are synthesized by taking a diol and essentially capping each side of the diol with IPMS. So what you have is a system that has urethane groups in the backbone, which impart the advantageous properties of a typical polyurethane, like the flexibility, like the good chemical resistance and weatherability, but the ends of the molecule are trimethoxysilane functionalities. And again, these products will cure with themselves or they will cross-link a polyol. So you have the properties of a polyurethane, but you have the reactivity of a non-isocyanate system. Now, the center of this molecule, the box marked X, is the spacer group. Depending on your choice of the spacer group, you can tailor the parameters of your system to the needs of the customer for their particular application. So, a different X group would give you different results in terms of flexibility or chemical resistance or viscosity. And we've developed a pretty robust portfolio, which I'll get into in a few slides that have this molecule as the base structure and then different varied 
backbones, uh, the X group is, is, has been varied multiple times to give different properties. The commercial trade name of these non-isocyanate polyurethane crosslinkers is the Vestinet EPM series. And there's two subsets within the M series. There's the EPM grades and the EPMF grades. The M grades are for heat cure applications. The MF grades are for ambient cure systems. The F in MF stands for formulated. And the reason these systems can cure at room temperature or ambient conditions is because they've been formulated with a primary amine catalyst, which allows the system to cure without the addition of other catalysts or the addition of heat. Typically, the MF grades are used for the wood coatings market. It's very popular with wood furniture and parquet flooring, a little bit in the auto re automotive refinish market, and also for trains and buses. Because of the highly cross-linked nature of these systems, they give interesting anti-graffiti properties, which makes them an ideal candidate when it comes to coating a train or a bus. The MF systems, there are five different grades available, and with the M systems, there's four different grades available. So I just want to briefly touch on the reaction mechanism of the MF products at ambient temperature. So unlike in nano-modified solutions, the hard glass-like regimes are incorporated into the chemical structure and distributed evenly throughout the cross-linked polymer system. The MF product can react in two different ways. There are two major pathways that it can take, either with an acrylic polyol or by itself. So the first pathway that I'll talk about is the top pathway, the hydrolysis and the condensation. As I said earlier, the alkoxy silane systems are hydrolyzable. They'll react with moisture and convert to a silanol. Once converted to a silanol, those silanols will self-condense with each other, or they will condense with the hydroxyl functionalities from the polyol. Methanol will be released, and you will form your hard, highly cross-linked organosilane film. The second pathway is what we call a transesterification. Typically, this pathway needs a co-catalyst as well as heat. However, at ambient conditions, there will be a little bit of transesterification happening. The primary reaction mechanism at ambient temperature is the hydrolysis and the condensation pathway. But about 10% of the MF product will actually react via the transesterification pathway, which is shown on the bottom. Again, methanol was released. And again, you have a highly cross-linked organosilane uh, polymer network. So in summary, essentially there's two pathways that these products can react. They will hydrolyze and condense either with themselves or with a polyol, or they will transesterify with a polyol of your choice. So over the last couple of years, we've developed several different MF grades for our Vestinat M series. And most recently we've come out with the MF203, the 204, and the 205. Now each product has a different spacer group, which allows for different properties and allows the customer to tailor uh, the formulation to the needs of their specific application. Each of these systems is water clear, as you can see from the photos on this slide. They're soluble in a variety of different solvents. For example, solvent naphtha, Aromatics and glycol ethers are the most common and best solvents. Esters also can be used. For example, butyl acetate, which is a common solvent used in the coatings market, that can be used with these systems. However, if they're going to be stored for a long period of time in solvent, sometimes that can influence the, the shelf life. It's not always a problem, but sometimes these systems are not as compatible with esters as we would like them to be. So if you'd like to use an ester as a thinner, strongly recommend that you test some storage stability before actually formulating and 
using it as a, as a system. The viscosities of these systems is varied, and that's dependent on the molecular structure. Both the MF203 and the MF204 are 100% solids. The MF205 is a little bit different of a polymer chain, and because of that, we incorporated some xylene to cut the viscosity down and make it a little more workable. So, this slide here is showing a summary of the MF203, the MF204, and the MF205 compared to a standard 2K polyurethane and compared to their MF predecessors. So MF203 is sort of the new next generation version of MF201, which we released several years ago. And the MF204 is the next generation of the 202. Now these systems have enhanced scratch resistance, also increased drying properties, as well as some enhanced flexibility, especially with the 204 compared to the 202. So as you can see from the spider charts on the right side, all of these systems have excellent scratch resistance, much better than a standard 2K polyurethane. They dry much, much quicker. They're much faster reaction, reacting. However, the gloss, the flexibility, and the chemical resistance is somewhat comparable to a standard 2K polyurethane, and in some situations, even better. So now to take a look at some actual data. This was a study we did in our lab in Horsham. We formulated one component non-isocyanate systems based on MF203, MF204, and MF205. There was no solvent added to these systems. So the MF203 and the MF204 are 100% solids. The MF205 was used neat, so it's an 82% solid system. And we applied thin films at 38 microns, so that's about one and a half mils, to standard cold rolled steel. And then we cured the system at different relative humidities at 23 degrees Celsius and measured the dry time properties. So as you can see, the humidity has a dramatic effect on the dry time of all three of these MF products. The MF203 is by far the fastest reacting at 20, 40, 60, and 80% relative humidity. The MF205 is the slowest. However, the advantage of the MF205 over the MF203 and the 204 is flexibility. So you give up a little bit in terms of your drying properties, but the MF205 has certain advantages over the 203 and the 204 not expressed in this data. Now as far as the actual dry through time, Again, we see a similar trend, where the 203 is by far the fastest and the 205 is by far the slowest. So, depending on the application of your customer or where this coating is going to be applied, especially for outdoor coatings, depending on the humidity of the region will determine which of the three products you may want to choose or which of the three products you may want to recommend that your customer test. So this slide is an example of Vestinet EPMF technology coated over different types of wood. So on the left side is the coated wood, on the right side is the uncoated wood. And you can see from this photo that there's a great enhancement in the appearance of the wood with the incorporation of MF technology as a clear top coat. Again, these systems are fast drying and highly durable against scratches, which is very advantageous for things like wood flooring. And they also have very much improved chemical and stain resistances. On this slide, we see three different pictures. One is untreated wood. One is a panel with wood, is a wood panel that's treated with Vestinet EPMF technology. And we perform spot testing with various different solvents and household items like uh, red wine, mustard, coffee, uh, typical things that you would need a parquet floor to be resistant to. So we performed a spot test with each of these reagents and left it on the coated wood panel for 16 hours. After 16 hours, we wiped off each of these reagents with a damp cloth and inspected the wood surface for defects or imperfections. 
And you can see from this photo that the stain resistance of the MF technology is unparalleled, even against something as harsh as mustard. So on this slide, we have an example of a typical one component non-isocyanate wood coating based on our Vestinat EPMF205. All of the systems in the MF range can be used to formulate one component coatings in addition to two component coatings. So the formulation for this system is shown below and it was applied via a spray application and it was compared to just a standard two component polyurethane. The system was scratch tested by using an abrasive medium that was set on top of the coated wood panel and on top of the abrading medium was a one kilogram weight and the abrading medium was moved back and forth until a burnished uh, until there was burnishing noticed on the system. So I believe this was done for a hundred passes at a one square inch uh, swatch of the panel. And you can see that the 2K polyurethane got completely eaten up. The MF base coat is unchanged. So we just covered one component ambient temperature cure formulations based on our MF technology. Now I'm going to show an example of a two component system. Uh, this system is based on MF203 and like one component systems, all of the MF products can be formulated in a two component system. Now it should be pointed out that in a 2K system, the MF products can only be used in lieu of a polyisocyanate. They can't be used in addition to a polyisocyanate. The reason is the MF products are formulated with the primary amine catalyst, which allows them to cure at ambient conditions. If they're incorporated into a two component system that already has a polyisocyanate, that primary amine is just going to react with the isocyanate instead of catalyzing the silane reaction. So you won't get a full cured film. So if you want to use the MF products in a 2K system, you have to take out all of the isocyanate and replace it with the MF technology. There is no recommended, there is no um, standard loading level for the MF203 system. We typically recommend that you start at a loading level of 20 to 30 percent on the non-volatiles and then adjust up or down from there based on your application and the desired properties. So the very high cross-link density of these systems gives us great resistance against a variety of different chemicals. For example, wash off graffiti, graffiti sprayings. So we did a magic ink test where we took four different types of uh, marker inks and drew a line across the panel with each one. The ink was allowed to sit on the panel until it was dry and then a warm cloth was used to wipe the panel clean. And we have two different formulated systems. One is the MF low dosage and one is the MF high dosage. And you can see that the more MF technology you would incorporate into your 2K non-isocyanate system, the better your anti-graffiti properties are. So the main message of this slide and this talk in general is that the MF technology gives us very improved scratch resistance, overall chemical resistance and durability, higher hardness and better drying speed than a traditional polyurethane. And the higher dosage of the MF technology that you incorporate into your two component system, the better all of these properties will be. So in summary, the Vestinet EP MF technology gives us very fast curing cycles and much better re return to service time for ambient cure systems than a traditional polyurethane, much better durability against chemicals, outstanding scratch resistance, and most importantly, they're isocyanate free. They're much safer to handle than a traditional polyurethane, and they also give us some more enhanced properties. So this concludes the end of my presentation. Thank you all for listening, and if you would like to hear more or get some more information based on our MF technology, you can visit the website at the bottom of the slide, or you can get in touch with me, Mike Brignone, directly via email or by phone. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of your day.